White House and congressional Democrats have unveiled a sweeping immigration bill. Earlier in the week, White House Press Secretary Jen Psaki confirmed that President Biden's immigration bill does include a controversial eight-year pathway to citizenship for illegal aliens. Listen. There certainly is part of the proposal that the president outlined uh, and proposed on day one is an earned path to citizenship, right, for uh, 11 million uh, immigrants who are undocumented immigrants who are living in the country. Here to help us unpack Biden's new plan for immigration reform is the executive director of the Center for Immigration Studies, Mark Kerkorian. Mark, what message is the Biden administration sending to people who have gone through the legal channels to obtain citizenship? that they're suckers, that's the message that's being sent, because this bill would legalize the entire illegal population, and uh, this is something they're not talking about. It would legalize everybody who got here before January 1st of this year. So it's not even established illegal immigrants, it's people who got here a month and a half ago. Hmm. And I mean, put that in context. What does that mean? Because in general, when you see the polling on this, Americans support uh, helping people. They want to embrace those who are fleeing persecution. But the consequences of that, the educational consequences, the, uh, uh, the, the, the welfare consequences of that, the community transformation in some areas, what does that mean saying, OK, everybody's now a citizen who's here? Well, they're not all citizens yet, but they would all be legal. Uh, what it means right. is that you're they're teeing up a situation because this bill also reduces immigration enforcement. They're teeing up a situation where you're going to have even more illegal immigration in the future. It's essentially guaranteed. The bill also doubles legal immigration. So this really is a transformative piece of legislation that makes the earlier bills from, for instance, the Gang of Eight bill from when Obama was around, right. makes that seem kind of moderate almost. Yeah, well, the immigration bills, as you mentioned, pushed by Bush and, and Obama, it was also a grand bargain, amnesty for those already here in exchange for promises to enforce the law in the future. Now, those bills never made it out of the gate. Why not, and could this time be different? Uh, I don't think this bill is going to pass in its current form. And I think the activist mm -hmm. groups have been pretty open in saying that. There are stories in Politico and New York Times saying that the activist groups are willing to go for pieces of this bill. And I think they're going to present this as, you know, a kind of a moderate compromise. They're going to push for amnesty for only four million people, say, instead of 11 or 12 million. In other words, they'll try to push the DREAM Act specifically or a farm worker right. amnesty. But those all have the same problem because there's still no enforcement in them. And if you hmm. amnesty people who are here without fixing the problems that created the illegal population, you're not fixing anything because you're just going to have another hmm. debate like this a few years down the road. Republicans are saying they will not support the bill. Senator Mitch McConnell called it, quote, a massive proposal for blanket amnesty that would gut enforcement of American laws while creating a huge new incentive for people to rush here illegally at the same time. Your reaction, and is this already creating a surge at the border, Mark? I read a story today uh, that border security picked up 200 migrants dumped by human traffickers as that storm moved through Texas. And suddenly the United States had to, you know, care for these 200 people. I mean, it's not just this bill that is drawing people north, but it is the overall Biden approach. We've been calling it the Biden effect at the border because even before he was sworn in, there was a whole group of illegal immigrants that occupied one of the bridges in El Paso over the border because they were waiting in Mexico as they were required to. And they were chanting, Biden, Biden, Biden. In other words, they understood that Biden's laxity on immigration, and this bill is just part of that broader approach, means that they're going to be able to get in. And uh, they will. Uh, so even if this bill doesn't go anywhere, the Biden administration's unwillingness to even enforce current immigration laws is going to lead to a building surge at the border of illegal immigrants. Mm. 
Wow. Uh, Republican Senator Lindsey Graham and Democratic Senator Dick Durbin have suggested a limited bill that focuses on the DACA recipients, as you mentioned a moment ago. Now, DACA affects approximately 700,000 people who were brought here illegally as minors. They're now adults for the most part. Uh, there is support on both sides of the aisle for creating a pathway for these dreamers. But where do you draw the line, Mark? I mean, the DACA kids can stay, but their parents and grandparents have to go home. That that yeah. that doesn't quite that, that it's not going to that won't sell. Yeah. And that's I mean, that's a good point. And uh, remember, the bill, all of these bills do not just deal with the people who got work permits from Obama illegally under the DACA program. Mm -hmm. As you suggested, that's something like 700,000 people. All of them mm -hmm. push the envelope and end up trying to give green cards to maybe three or four times as many people, two million people or more. If it were talking just about people who came very young, grew up here, in other words, they didn't come as teenagers, they came as little kids, spent their whole schooling right. in the United States, that's right. something I'm even for under certain circumstances if it has enforcement measures and if their parents mm -hmm. don't benefit. And none of the legislation includes measures like that. Yeah, no, there has to be a balance here. I mean, you can't have just an open border. That, that's not a country. That, that's, a, that's an open territory. Um, and the other part of this is Americans are a compassionate people. These people should be cared for in some way. I mean, the best the best scenario would be for them to have opportunity in their home country, which we have funded through aid packages and we have uh, uh, facilitated through trade agreements. Uh, one would hope that you could get to a point where they wouldn't have to flee uh, for a better way of life, that they could find their better way of life in Honduras or Guatemala or Mexico. But barring that, should there just be an open border in the United States? Now, the Biden administration, they've revived the so-called catch and release system when it comes to dealing with illegal immigrants at the southern border. Two weeks ago, President Biden signed an executive order revoking President Trump's ban on catch and release. So Biden will allow undocumented migrants to remain in the U.S. while awaiting their immigration proceedings. Many migrants don't show up, Mark, for their trial dates. They just disappear. Why revive this catch and release system? So you, you check the person in, you make a court date, and you send them on their way, and they're released into mainland America. Well, because the activist groups that have basically taken over the mainstream of the Democratic Party on immigration, this is really part of a radicalization of the Democratic view on immigration that started before Trump, uh, insist that anything Trump did has to be undone. And um, basically their, uh, their sort of fundamental approach to immigration is that anyone who wants to come here has a right to do so. We have no right to stop them. That's what this all boils down to, and it's put into legislative language, but the principle is we have no right to keep people out unless they're terrorists or murderers, something like that. But ordinary people who want to come here have a right to come here. That is where the Biden administration is coming from. Hmm. The number of unaccompanied minors, Mark, uh, referred to the U.S. Office of Refugee Resettlement climbed from 1,500 in October to 3,364 in December, a 120 percent jump. Now, what does this say about how the Biden administration's rhetoric and policies on immigration are being interpreted by people living south of the border? Well, I mean, it's uh, he, he's sending a message that if you come, you're going to be able to stay, especially if you are either a kid yourself or you bring a kid with you. And remember, unaccompanied minor is a kind of legalistic term. None of these kids are unaccompanied. Their parents are illegal immigrants in the United States. They left the kids with grandma back home, and they saw the opportunity to pay a smuggler to bring them to the border, at which point then the smuggler points to the Border Patrol jeep and says, go and turn yourself into that guy. Make sure you have mm -hmm. your parents' phone number in your pocket, and they will deliver right. you at U.S. taxpayer expense to your illegal immigrant parents who paid me. And by the way, the smuggler fee is cheaper because the smugglers don't have to actually go into the U.S. They deliver the kids to the mm -hmm. border and then hand them off to the Border Patrol. And, you know, what would you think people would do when Biden essentially is inviting them to do that? Yeah.
People don't understand, Mark, because they've never been down to the border. Um, I have several times, and I've been on those boats and at the, the American shore across the Rio Grande. When you see the smugglers pull up, they dump these people, give them life rafts or really inflatable tires, and they shove them into the Rio Grande it, where the current is swirling them. So then the, the Border Patrol goes out on a boat, fishes these people out. Border Patrol is drafted into being part of the trafficker's chain of events. They're actually part of the process, which is astounding to me. Um, what kind of predicament is the Biden administration putting on countries like uh, Mexico and Guatemala? What predicament are they putting them in when they're giving the message, as the Mexican president said the other day, that the doors are open? And what about the migrants now subjected to these traffickers, horrible people? Yeah, I mean, the, the, the issue really, the uh, most important issue, I think, is what is Mexico and then maybe secondarily Guatemala and other countries, what are they going to do? They were, they've mm -hmm. been cooperating with us far more than I expected uh, because of mm -hmm. President Trump's, you know, use of carrots and sticks. Um, but they don't, you know, who believes that a feeble time server in the White House is going to, you know, exercise any kind of authority uh, against Mexico. It's not going to happen. And so, mm -hmm. you know, little by little, you're going to see the Mexicans and the Guatemalans uh, ease up. You know, they may still want to stop big caravans because that just makes them look mm -hmm. bad. They're violating their country's sovereignty. But if you're coming in, you know, illegal immigrants coming in groups of 20 and 30 up to the border and crossing, mm -hmm. they're not going to they're not going to work with us to stop that the way they did under Trump, because they don't fear Biden the way they feared Trump. Hmm. We will leave it there. Mark Kerkorian, thank you so much. You can find more of Mark's work at the Center for Immigration Studies, CIS.org. Thank you, Mark. Thank you.